now. I think that we have to step outside uh, this corporate two-party duopoly uh, and begin to empower right now the third uh, party, you know, that, that I think represents or, or challenges corporate power uh, most effectively is the green. It has issues, you know, it functions well in cities like Richmond, California, doesn't function as well in other places. Uh, but if they can pull uh, 15 percent, that gives them ballot access in, uh, uh, in 2020 in uh, a few dozen states, and it gives them $10 million. I think that, that now is the time to, as Ceresa did a decade ago, to fight back, because we have very little time left. One of the things we have to remember is that we have a large number of uh, supporters of Donald Trump uh, who celebrate American violence through the gun culture, uh, open racism, uh, neo-Confederate movements, nativist movements. And Trump, uh, I think, has made clear now on the campaign trail uh, that he will essentially attempt to discredit the system if he loses. And right now, they are working within the system. But unleashing that rage, uh, you know, or, or, or essentially legitimizing that rage and that kind of violence uh, after the election uh, will begin to really rent the fabric of American society. We have no more time to play around. We haven't even spoken about the issue of climate change. Uh, we know from the leaked emails that Hillary Clinton is a fan of fracking. She brags about uh, promoting fracking in Poland and other places as secretary of state. Um, we, we just the 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 the, 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 the kind of weakness uh, of the system itself cannot, I think, sustain uh, uh, much more of this assault without dramatic and frightening. A blowback and ramifications, and I think Trump is systematic of that. So, as I've said many times, I think we have to uh, do what many Podemos and many parties in Europe have done. We have to walk into the political wilderness. Uh, we have to build movements, uh, uh, and we have to build alternative third parties uh, that challenge this system, because the inevitable result is a kind of frightening police state. Well, legally, it's already in place. Physically, in marginal communities, they've been turned virtually into uh, many uh, police states. Uh, the system of mass incarceration will not be affected in any meaningful way. Of course, it was the Clintons that put much of it in place. Uh, we just saw this very courageous prisoner strike, uh, where the prisoners uh, did work stoppages, because they said the only way to stop this system of neo-slavery is to stop being a slave. Uh, and I think that is a level of political consciousness that the rest of us have to begin to attain. So, Professor Glaude, your response to Chris Hedges' rejection of uh, strategic voting? Well, I think we agree on principle. And, and part of what I think where we, where, where we agree is that we have to keep Trump out of office. And the question for me is that how do we do that? Um, and one of the ways I, I'm thinking we need to do it is to vote strategically. And that is, in those places where we can, uh, for me, blank out or uh, vote for Jill Stein, uh, uh, we should. Uh, and in those places where the battleground states where it matters, uh, where Trump has a chance to win, I think we need to turn out uh, in massive numbers uh, and make sure uh, that he doesn't win those states. I think we have to do two things simultaneously. Um, and I think he's right. Uh, in this regard, I think that what we've seen and what we've witnessed uh, in this moment is the bankruptcy of a particular ideo economic ideological philosophy uh, that has left uh, uh, so many so many people uh, uh, behind. And I think we need to dare to imagine a new world. But I think it's going to require strategic and tactical thinking. Um, and and I think. Uh, on its face, Chris and I aren't disagreeing. I just think there there's there are ways to get to the same to, to the same end. Eddie